Hello, 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 everyone. Our people are, I see eyeballs. People are starting to join. Hi, I'm Julia. I'm from the Paper and Ink Boutique and the Sherry. There we are. We did not plan our shirts, but we look like twins today. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we got hello, our aprons for. How though. are you? Yes. There we go. People hello, friends. In. Hello, everyone. Thank you. We can see your comments. So hello, hello, hello. Oops. I move that out of the way. Hello. Hello, Donna. Hello, everyone watching from We've the Paper Inspiration Group and people from the Paper Crafters Workshop. Woohoo! We've got Woo. someone that says, hi, beautiful. Is that mm. you or me? Both of us. We're just going to say us. both. <laughs> Matt. Matt and Glenn. Oh. <laughs> Hey, Glenda. Glenda from New Brunswick. Hello. Good evening, oh. everyone. Good evening. Hello. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Julia, and I'm the owner of the Papering Boutique in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And that's Sherry. I'm Sherry from the Paper Crafters Workshop, and I'm having trouble finding my camera here. So <laughs> I know we're um, like from the Paper Crafters Workshop in Stouffville, Ontario. And you guys are tuning in because... We had, we had a little challenge. We had a little challenge uh, back in October for Thanksgiving. And uh, it was resoundingly amazing, you know, just to see our communities come together. Uh, I think there was a little bit of a competitive uh, spirit that we, that we instituted, but uh, it was all in good fun and good friendship. So a huge thank you to everyone who supported either the Paper and Ink Boutique or the Paper Crafters Workshop. At the end of the day, it's the food banks who won, and that is the best, the best thing ever. So yeah. um, for those of you who missed it, the challenge was Sherry challenged us to a Thanksgiving food bank challenge. And um, so we asked our customers to bring in food donations and ours went to the Calgary Food Bank and yours went to the Stouffville Food Bank, which fortunately for us is located right across the parking lot from our store. Um, <laughs> That's handy. It was, it, it was very handy. Matt still had to drive it over because there were so <laughs> many donations, but uh, it was very handy to have there. And so he, amazing uh, turnout that between the two stores, we raised over 1,300, 1300 pounds of non-perishable items, whether it was food or the secret weapon, which was the laundry soap or any of those wonderful and much needed things. Um, it was it was fantastic to be able to donate and to help people. Even though we were giving our donations a little bit after Thanksgiving, it was still, you know, it's stuff that they need all year round. Yeah, Glenn dropped ours off the week after Thanksgiving and there was a lineup of cars at the food bank going through picking up uh, food hampers. And so when Glenn dropped our food off, um, they were extremely grateful. So yeah, living in a big center like Calgary. Um, yeah, we we've got a problem. There is a, many, many families that are really struggling. So um, it was uh, amazing to be able to give back to our community. So congratulations to everyone, everyone in Stovall, everyone in Calgary, thank you so much for everything. But Sherry raised or um, received 801 pounds. Yeah. And we were 536. Yeah. Just just a smidge. We were so close. Yeah. So close. It really, it was. Rematch. <laughs> but uh, so the challenge was the, um, and I don't want to use the L word because nobody is a loser, but the store that didn't raise, um, didn't come out on top. Uh, we're just going to do a demo for the other store. So that's why I'm here. But I asked Sherry, I said, well, join in on the fun, like be here, you know, and then Sherry was very gracious enough to say, well, how about I come and do a demo for your people? So we're still working at a date. So stay yeah. tuned for that. Yeah. But this is going to be my demo. Sherry's going to do something different at another date. And we'll get that to you as soon as possible. Exactly. So Let's get started. So what yeah. I'm going to do is before share you go here. on, before you go on, Julia, um, just so customers, so everyone who's tuning in know um, for our learning lives, which is usually at this time every Tuesday night uh, on our Facebook page, um, we we tend to have a theme, and 
November, this being the first one of November, our theme is something Christmas, but not a card. So I added that challenge onto Julia, and that is where she has come up with her amazing project that she's going to share with you tonight. And oh, guys, you guys Sherry are going to get me, get me messy. Sherry, just, <laughs> Sherry loves the challenges. So I made sure that my challenge included some mixed media because I'm challenging Sherry to get messy. Yeah. We'll and do we it. haven't even started and look at my hands. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do, Sherry's still going to be here. She's going to be watching. She'll be looking at your comments, um, but I'm going to switch over to my overhead camera. So give me, give me a second to, oops, I keep clicking the wrong button. There we go. My overhead cam, perfect. And here we go. So Sherry's going to be here. She's also going to be playing along. And then at the end, uh, she will share what she's made. Um, but yeah, she can, uh, read your comments out or, um, <laughs> Sherry and mess, not in the same sentence, LOL. See your people know you, Sherry. Yes. Margaret knows me for sure. <laughs> okay. So tonight I am using some crafters workshop, uh, stencil butters and stardust butters, which these are absolutely amazing. And I love them. Um, I'm also going to be using the mica sprays from uh, Tim Holtz and Ranger. So I've got both of the holiday, um, the holiday uh, mica stains from this year, three and four. So I have them both here. Um, I'm also using this die set. So if you did the Spellbinders, the Crafters Home exclusive class with Spellbinders this past weekend, you would have this die set in your kit. Um, I have extras in my store to sell just this. So if you didn't take the class, but you really want the die set, I do have this for sale. It's there. So I we will have it as well. We have it as Sherry. well for the Ontario customers. You can find it on our website. Absolutely. Everything Sherry and I commented. Um, uh, we, we went back and forth. We made sure that what I'm using is available to both stores. Yeah. Or at least something Oops. very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I made here. So this is my sample. It's so pretty. I absolutely love it. But before we start making this, I am going to show you just a few techniques using the products that I pulled out. Okay. Here we go. Now, I don't know who loves the spray stains from Ranger and Tim Holtz. I love love the mica stains absolutely love them i'm going to come back here i'm actually going to show you a close-up so my flowers and the words i actually used the mica stains on those absolutely gorgeous i use no colored cardstock at all this is all using mica stains okay so what i'm going to do i'm going to set that aside now i'm working on i've got uh the heavy stock um tags from ranger this i don't know if this is the dina wakely this could be dina wakely um i have some of the tim holtz ones here but i can't find them but it is a heavier mixed media stock tag so sherry said she goes well our learn what do you call it on tuesdays learn with me learning live learning live on tuesdays and it's all about christmas and i was like really okay because Sherry didn't win the challenge enough. She has to keep challenging me. So I of said, course. okay, let's go with Christmas. And it just so happens that it is snowing so heavily right now in, in Calgary. Um, so now I'm starting to feel it's it's coming up to Christmas. So this is good. Okay, she so I'm going to take jealous of our 20 degree temperatures today, though. Oh, just shush. Shush. <laughs> okay. So the background on this tag background on this tag is using this stardust butter this is the champagne stardust butter from the crafters workshop it is amazing like just look at that it is absolutely gorgeous and this is almost empty you can tell i love this because there's only like that much left. now i tell people um like i i've been into mixed media for i don't know close to 10 years and I tell people that if you're going to buy these things, use them. Don't save them. Don't hoard them because you know what? 
these things will dry up and when you go to use them, they'll be no good and you'll have to throw them out. And now you're probably saying, oh, Julia, what do you mean? Um, the reason why I'm telling you that is because I have thrown away so many of these things because like you, I tend to hoard and I find things so pretty, but more pretty things will come out and you'll want those pretty things too. So I am, oops, I don't know what that is, wipe that off. So all I'm doing is taking a palette knife and I'm just putting a really thin layer on my tag background and that will be my background. Now, is it perfect? Nope. But you know what? We're doing another layer on top of it. So it doesn't matter if this is perfect. We're just getting that stencil butter down. I'm just going to clean up those edges a little bit. There we go. So there's the background for my tag. All right. I'm going to lay that just to the side. It's a very thin layer of stencil butter. So it will not take very long to dry. So I'm just going to set it off to the side. I'm also going to wipe the edges of my jar before I put the lid on it because that also helps keep that air out. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to wipe that away. Now, stencil butters, this is a similar product, but this is the one that has the stardust in it or the mica powders. So can you use this and do the exact same technique? Yep, you absolutely can. So this one I'm going to use, this is ocean blue. I don't know how many colors of stencil butters there are. There are a lot. I, I have a lot of them because they're all gorgeous. I mean, look at that. I mean, it's just so smooth and creamy. I want to say there's at least a dozen, but I know they came out with some new colors just recently. So it's probably more than that. Yeah, I'd say it's, yeah, maybe a dozen, maybe 18 by now, but yeah, they're all gorgeous. So say I want a blue background. I'm going to use this gorgeous stencil butter. Put that on the background. I mean, just now, Julia, if people yeah. wanted to do the blue, but they wanted sparkle, could they mix it with the, the silver or mix it with the the white one, the the, the uh, white stardust? I would mix it with the white one, yeah, okay. which I don't have on me, but yes. No, I don't either. I was just curious if you could mix them. Absolutely, you can mix them, yeah. Okay, so there's taking just a regular stencil butter and just putting it on the back of the tag. I mean, look at that shimmer. That is absolutely gorgeous. And again, if you look at it up close, is it perfect? No. Now I could let this dry and come back and do another layer. Um, and it would, it would give it another coat. But again, I'm not going to leave it like this. I'm adding stuff on top of it, right? So uh, are you using the back of the palette knife and why? Okay, let me, that's a good question, Linda. I'm just going to set this aside. The reason why I'm using the back of the palette knife, let me just wipe this off, do another one. Wipe the edge before you put the lid on. All right, let me grab another color. Um, I'm going to grab chartreuse. Chartreuse is probably my most favorite color. And again, I can't stress this enough. If you're going to buy things like this, um, use them because, yeah, ocean blue is, is gorgeous. Is stencil butter similar to Vicky Booten glazes? Um, the glazes are a little bit more translucent. These are very thick. These are the, they really are like butter. They really are. So I'm going to take some of the chartreuse on the back of my palette knife. And the reason why I'm doing that is because this is an offset palette knife. If I was to put it on here, how would I get it on? I would have to lift this up, right? But because, oops, because this is flat, a flat surface, I want to be able to put this down and drag it across. Okay, so I'm going to put that on there and I'm going to drag Now, depending on how thick you put it on, I could come back in and maybe do some lines in it if I want to add some texture. 
but I am just going to do this. Now, another thing I like to do, and I tell people this all the time, is mixing. So right now I've got chartreuse on there. I'm going to clean off my palette knife. Again, wipe the edge because you want to keep those edges clean when you put these on because you want to get a good seal. I'm going to wipe off my knife. Now I'm going to come in. Uh, do I want to use? No, I don't want to use silver. I'm going to use the Champagne Stardust Butter. Okay. I'm going to pick up a little bit of this. So say I want to just come in and drag this in. So I'm just going to come in and drag that across. I'm going fairly light because I don't want to move that original color of chartreuse. But I just want to add just a little bit of that champagne. Just dragging that across. Wipe that up. Again. I know sometimes I'm lazy and don't wipe the lid off and I always come back the next time and I am ashamed of myself for not doing that. And it just takes a couple of seconds. Really can't stress enough how important that is. Okay, so let me lift that up. So that is the chartreuse. And then I have drugged some of that champagne uh, stardust butter over the top. Now it's not... Oh, Glenn says there's 26 stencil butters. Oh wow. God. Had no idea. Thank you, Glenn. Thanks, Glenn. Okay, I'm just going to clean up the edges. This is still wet. I'm going to let it dry. I could take my heat tool to it, but I'm going to let it air dry because I've got a technique that I'm going to show you with the heat tool that I absolutely love. And that's a technique that I learned from uh, Ken Oliver. And Ken's amazing. Love Ken. I'm just going to clean up my area here a little bit. Ken Oliver has tons of energy. Oh my gosh. Have you ever had him teach at your store? I have not. He we, is amazing. We might have to get on that. Yeah, he is amazing. Amazing. Okay, great. So there's my area cleaned up. I'm going to come back to this original one here. So this is the one where I put the champagne the champagne stencil butter on. Uh, it feels like it's almost dry, but I'm just going to take my heat tool really quick and just give it a blast of heat. I always say, I always do uh, what uh, Tim Holt says. If it's not wet, it's dry. Perfect. It's dry. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to oh, come Jim. in. This is one of the stencils. I'm not going to use this for my final one. That's this one. I'm going to, this is a crafter's workshop stencil. This one is called uh, Modern Art Circles. I just love crafter's workshop stencils. They're amazing. We're just getting okay. started in carrying a lot of their stuff. So if any of my customers are looking for certain things, just drop me an email. And mm -hmm. with our next TCW um class or order uh, we can always special order things for you as well yeah their selection of stencils is amazing okay so i'm gonna take some more of that gorgeous chartreuse and i'm going to take my stencil now i always tell my people i very rarely use an entire stencil on a project i will just go through and just do portions like that Okay, now I'm going to clean off my palette knife. I'm going to grab another color here. I'm not moving my stencil. Stencil stay in there. Uh, let's go back to ocean blue. These are probably my two most favorite colors. Just love them. Not that you can see me, but I'm going rogue and I've changed my colors on you already. So. Oh, Sherry. <laughs> Okay, so Good you can times. see I'm going wet into wet with those stencil butters. Perfect. So I used chartreuse and I used, oops. There we go. Okay, so there we go. So that's stencil butter on that back. 
that background that I did the champagne butter. Just look how gorgeous that is. So here's my blue, my ocean blue with my chartreuse. And right in the middle, I've got a mix of the two. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Again, this is wet. I'm not going to touch it. I love it the way it is. But one of the cool things about these stencil butters is you can heat them. They will bubble up and give you texture. Now, again, I have to say, clean your stencils right away because when these things dry, they are a real pain. Okay, so just a quick wipe. Normally, what I have beside me is um, a container full of water, and I'll just throw them in there until I'm done, but I didn't get that far today. There we go. Okay. Now, for those of you who know me, you know, I love stencils. I make, I make no secret of that. We have Stencil Central in our store because it's my favorite place. I love it. And I have stencils, oh, old stencils, like stencils from companies that don't even exist anymore. And I just, I love them. And the reason why I love stencils is because, um, you can use them over and over and over again in so many different ways. And um, you can use stencils together. You can use them, you know, on scrapbooking, card making, mixed media, art journal, whatever it is. And my some of my oldest stencils, I can tell you how often I've used them, like hundreds of times in the 12 to 15 years that I've had them. So Really, it's come down to pennies a usage um, for them. So that's why I love stencils so much. I love them. Okay, so I did another background because I, um, I forgot I needed one for my final project. So again, I just took that champagne stencil butter with my palette knife, drug it along the back. Yeah, Margaret, I usually do that. I'll grab out my um, my art journal. I'm just, yeah. Oh, somebody's frozen. Are we frozen? Oh, no, people are saying no. Okay, good. So I'm just doing a quick dry on this stencil butter. Just want to dry this background to show you my next technique. And then we're going to move on to the micas. Okay, so I'm going to take this stencil. Now, you're probably looking at it and going, okay, well, what is that? It is called Viney Flowers. Now, the reason why I chose it is because I knew it was going to come out looking rather ab abstract. It's not going to look like this because I'm filling in the gaps in between, right? I just wanted it to add a little bit of texture to my background. So what I did is I took my stencil and I'm going to lay this kind of a little bit offset because I want to go from top corner to bottom corner. Now, if I do this way, you can see it has some open top and bottom. And I didn't want that. So I'm going to turn it so I've got the stencil and it covers all the way from the top to the bottom. Now, this time I'm going to use the Platinum Stardust Butter. How do you uncurl your paper after using a heat gun? Um, these mixed media ones tend to, once you dry them, tend to go flat. Um, anything that's lighter weight tends to curl, but if it does, I usually just run it along my, my fingers to flatten it out. Um, that's usually what I do. Okay. Would Simon's Lunar Pace worked on this project? Um, I never, I mean, yes. Now I'm going to heat the stencil butter and I've done this. Um, I don't know if the heat technique would work the same on those, but yeah, to do some of these other techniques, yes, it would absolutely work. All right, so this is the Platinum Stardust Butter. If you're wondering about other colors of Stardust Butters, there is the Platinum, 
there is the gold, there is black, and there is, I think, white. White. Yeah. Oh, I think you. it's called white pearl. Yeah, that's it. White pearl. Okay. Again, I'm loading up the back of my, my spatula. I'm going to start at that top corner and I'm just going to drag down my tag. Again, I'm not using the entire thing. Oh, caught it there. So I've gone from top corner to bottom corner, just di diagonally across my tag. Okay, there you go. So again, you can see it's rather abstract. You wouldn't really know. I mean, it kind of looks like a vine to me. Um, but I'm just going to set that there. I'm going to clean my stencil off and then we're going to heat this and I'm going to show you what it does. Now, if you do want to heat butters and texture paste like this, which a lot of them you can, uh, you can heat them and, and let them dry. Uh, but just know if you add too much heat, they will start to bubble and leave a texture. Now, I haven't done it with all of them, of course. I mean, I have a lot of them, but I haven't done it with a lot of them. Some of them could give off um, a bit of smoke if they're not really meant to be heated. So just make sure if you're doing that, that you're in a well-ventilated area. Okay, I'm gonna put the away. So there's my stencil butter, okay? Now I'm gonna take my heat tool. Now I'm using a Wagner heat tool, it gets super hot, super fast. If you're using the Ranger one, uh, could take a little bit longer to do the same. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start heating this and hopefully you'll be able to see on camera what happens. just starts to bubble up. I'm going to keep my heat tool moving because I don't want anything to burn. Okay, so if I turn it, hopefully, I don't know if you can see it, but it does puff up, okay? So you can leave it like that, but what I do is I wait until it cools down because it does get a little bit hot to the touch. You can leave it like that, but I like a little bit more texture. So what I do is I go in and I just kind of smoosh it down. You don't have to do it. It's just, this is what I prefer to do is I like to push it down. I don't necessarily want the height, but I want the texture. So I just go in and just give it a little bit of a push. And after it's cooled down, it's, it's, um, it just kind of feels like dried texture paste. So I'm just going to go in and push it down. So now I've got all this wonderful texture and I absolutely love that. Yeah. It's just gorgeous love the texture of it. I am just, I'm very much a touch and feel person. So the texture, I just find absolutely delicious. So there you go. That is that um, Stardust Butter. Heat it up. You saw it puff up, which you can leave, but I like to go back in and just kind of smush it down. Now, this is a great technique. If you have a brick stencil, 
to do it with a brick, uh, do it exactly the same. Like maybe you want to use like, I don't know, like a barn door, a red one. Maybe you want to sprinkle it with some um, black or brown embossing powder, which yes, you can do. Sprinkle that on while your butters are wet or your texture paste are wet, heat it up and then smoosh it down like that. And with, um, with a brick um, stencil, looks absolutely amazing. So there you go. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so this is going to be the base of my tag. Base of my tag there. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. And now let's move on to the, the mica stains. Now, if you don't have the mica stains, any stains will do. I just like the micas because of this wonderful shimmer that you get. So with a lot of things with mica, the micas do separate. So when you get these, there is a, a ball in there. So you do have to give them a good shake. Am I frozen? Somebody said I'm frozen. Am I frozen? Sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, okay. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure I shake these up because you don't want any of that beautiful mica sitting in the bottom of your of your um, spray bottle. So just give them a good shake. Okay, so this is, I'm trying to remember, I think this is holiday set number four, if I remember correctly. There you go. Okay, so this one is Cocktail Party, Merry Mint, and Shiny Bobble. Now, like I said, I use these for my die cuts. This was set three, uh, Fresh Balsam, Winter Frost, and Tart Cranberry. I have all of the mica sprays. I absolutely love them. I will use them with the stains. I will use them with the oxides. They work beautifully together. So I always tell people, don't be afraid of mixing your sprays. Don't be afraid of mixing um, your product. Because uh, I think in all of us, there's a little bit of a, um, a scientist. We like mixing. I like mixing this just to see what happens. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my two reds on this one because they're going to be one of my flowers. So I'm just going to check. Oh, this one still isn't mixed. I feel like we need to play like Moroccan music or something when we're doing this. Okay, there we go. All mixed. Okay, so I'm going to take my stain or my uh, sprays and I'm just going to add some to my tag. Mm. Love it. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. OMG. That is amazing. Now I'm going to use these and actually die cut them. Now, of course, you don't have to use a tag and do die cuts. I just like it for the size. You could take any piece of mixed media paper and put your sprays on them and then die cut out of them. I'm just using uh, tags just because it's convenient for me. Now, don't waste your sprays. Don't waste it. Just going to add a little bit of water. I'm going to grab another tag. We're just going to pick up all of that gorgeous color. Cause you can't waste it. Can't waste the gorgeous color. Okay. That's fantastic. I'm going to come back to this one. This one is only partially dried and I'm going to dip it back in here and I'm going to show you what happens. So that's what it looks like. Now you can see that some of it's still wet. I didn't completely dry it. I'm going to dip it in and then I'm going to pull it up. 
And what happens is you get these kind of almost like veins through them where the mica almost like attaches itself and you get these wonderful pulls of mica just by dipping and pulling. Red is not my favorite color to use because it always looks like, you know, something bad has happened here. It's like, you know, I've, I've cut myself or something. <laughs> it just looks really bad. But I just love the micas. Oh my gosh, love it. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. Normally, I would not waste this, but I got to move on. My people know me. They're like, oh my gosh, what's she doing? Normally, I would get out my art journal page or whatever, and I dip it in there. There we go. Let's wipe that up. Perfect. Okay, so there's the reds that I'm going to use to die cut out my flowers. So the reason why I did this one is so that I've got like a darker and a lighter. So when I put my flowers together, I've got two different colors. So you can see that. Okay, so that's why I did two. So that's going to set aside. Okay, now uh, there are some beautiful snowflakes in this dark die set. So I need to have some beautiful blue colors for my snowflakes. So I'll show you my snowflakes right here. Ooh, yes. Uh, Ellen, I have to say you're right. If your hands are not getting your dirt, if your hands aren't getting dirty, you're not doing it right. Absolutely. I got to say that is so much truth to that. I can't even say. You'll be happy to know my hands are dirty, too. Welcome to the dark side, Sherry. <laughs> okay, let me grab another tag. Let's get going with the next two. Now, I wasn't sure about these two, Shiny Bobo and Winter Frost, but I did use both of them. Now, come in. So much gorgeousness with these micas. I absolutely love them. Okay, there we go. Oh my word. Stunning. Stunning, stunning. I'm gonna set that aside. Add a little bit of water to what I have here. Almost feels like there's not enough, but now we've added water. Let me grab another tag. If you're wondering if I go through a lot of tags, I do. We carry the um I don't know if Sherry carries these, but the Dina Wakely bulk packs of tags in this size and the big size, I think you get like 50 tags in each. They probably go through a pack like a month. I mean, I just use so many tags. It's crazy. Okay, there we go. So there's that lighter color of blue. Going to look great going with this, right? Lovely. And I'm going to come in. Just going to dip wet into wet. I didn't even bother drying it this time. Okay, this shows that technique a little bit better. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But the veins running through here just from dipping it in, I like I don't even know what happens. If it's the micas, I don't know. The micas kind of globbing together, but I oh, just absolutely love it. There we go. That was a good one. Okay. If you can see it along the bottom there, but there's another vein. Absolutely stunning. Love it. Can't get enough of it. Now, there's so many good blues in here. I'm going to have to go back and maybe just pick up a bit more. I mean, shut up. That is so nice. Okay. Clean it up. And then let's move on to the greens. Now, if you don't have this year's set of micas, don't worry. Because if you have last year's, oh, my gosh, the last years are amazing too. I was actually looking at them as I was getting these ones out. Even the um, the Halloween ones are absolutely amazing. The purples and the Halloween ones. Okay, so there we go. There's my two blues. Again, these will be used to make the die cuts. Yep. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, people are wanting uh, Matt to take photos of you, Sherry, to actually... Wow. We'll show them later. Here, just wait. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're getting there. I'm getting, getting there. there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just wait. I 
Sorry, I shut you off. That's there. okay. That's okay. All right, we'll come back in a second. Okay, last two we want to do is the green. Yeah, the, the blues do look good together. I wasn't sure about them, but yeah, they do look good together. Okay, two more tags. We'll do the green and then we'll move on from there. Okay, my mic is a mix. So this one we've got Merry Mint and Fresh Balsam. There are the two green colors there. I do, um, Sherry mentioned that they do, uh, oh, sorry, I can't forget the, what, I can't remember the name of it. What do you do on Tuesdays? Learning Live. Learning Live. And we do Monday Night Live on Mondays, obviously. And uh, I was, we always do a lot of mixed media. So I always tell my people, you know, if you're, if you're buying these things from your local scrapbooking store, all these things, get them out and use them. And you don't necessarily have to have a project in mind. Get out and play. Just play with them, right? Just get out, play with your sprays, play with your texture play, pace. Um, because just you never see what know. they do. Oh, just get them out and play because you never know what you're going to create. All right. So instead of sopping this up, okay, there we go. The green show it really well. See what happens when I dipped it back down? Look at those wonderful things. Like I would leave this and use this as a background, but it actually makes it look really well um, when you die cut them because you get all these wonderful different colors and shapes and everything in your dyes. It's absolutely stunning. But look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Ugh, love it. Okay, so here we are with my leftovers. Just going to add just a, just a spray of water and I'm just going to dip that tag in there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put, I have to, uh, Sherry, read this comment on your screen. <laughs> okay, so this is our friend Ellen. I'm not sorry we kicked the paper and ink boutique butt on this challenge as we get to see a lot of different things. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> oh, and that's a sorry, and I sorry, are... not sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. But we're such good friends and we're going to be able to do lots more of these things and, and oh, share yeah. lots of ideas with you guys. And, you know, we've got some between our two teams and our two different specialties, you know, between what Julia likes to do and what I like to do guys, we could teach you guys stuff for years. So <laughs> we look forward to more challenges, win or lose. That's right. Sorry, not lose. Win or not win. <laughs> win or not win. <laughs> Okay, so there's my two greens. Okay, just going to dip those off. Let me set those aside. I'm running out of room. Okay, let me clean up this mess. So through the power of the internet, and because Julia was sort of organized, um, here, let me bring these, these six back in so you can see them one more time because they're absolutely gorgeous. I'm just gonna lay this down because they're not quite dry. So there's our green. There's our blue. And here's the red. So that's using these six colors of micas. And let me just tell you, I absolutely love them. Absolutely stunning. Now, could I use, and some people ask me this, well, they're in sets. Could I use all three together? Absolutely, you could. There's no, there's like the crafting police aren't going to come and, you know, arrest you for like using three stains together. Absolutely. I know I've used them separately, but yeah, let me use a, just a quick demo before we move on. Oops. And flip that over. This is usually the first thing I do before I share them with anyone is I always do three together. So let's do... Yeah. Okay. So that's one set. Uh, cocktail party, shiny bobble, merriment. So what I will do is I'm going to take merriment 
and shiny bauble. And you know when you take pink and blue and mix them, you're going to get purple. So yeah, that's exactly what happens. So if I do that, now I've entered a, just a completely new color into the mix. So yeah, get out your get out your things and have fun. Do I want to add the Merry Mint? Yeah, sure, let's do it. Don't want to add too much, but there you go. So that's using all three colors on one tag. Absolutely gorgeous. Love it. I could just play with sprays all day long. I could. I could just sit here and use all the different colors and just have so much fun. I know I do a lot of my Facebook Lives where we create backgrounds. I like to have backgrounds on hands for cards, um, for gifts. So sometimes if I don't have a project in mind, but I just... I just want to sit and uh, just play without really a project in mind is I will sit down and make backgrounds. That's what I'll do. Okay. So there you go. Same three colors. This was sprayed directly on the tag. This is dipping it in and look at the difference. Exact same colors. And now I've made something completely new. That's completely a great way when you're, when you're having trouble with your mojo as well is if you mm -hmm. just start without a project in mind for the end. Oh my gosh. It kind yeah. of opens things up and you don't feel as stressed and it just gives you a chance to play. And worst case, you just have some really pretty paper at the end. Exactly, exactly. And like I said, um, when I do this, I'll have a bunch of backgrounds. And sometimes I do these. This was a Facebook Live I did not too long ago where we just created a bunch of backgrounds. And then we take those backgrounds and make cards out of them or I'll make things for my art journal. So um yeah. I mean look at that. Look how gorgeous that is. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Exact same colors and look how different that is. Right. Yes, I am giving you the freedom to create. Go forth and create all the things. Just have fun. Just have fun. And really, isn't this what we do to keep ourselves sane? I know it's what I do to keep myself sane. Because sometimes you just need to sit down and just play and have fun. Okay, so let me show you the other three colors. Now, like I said, there's, I don't know how many spray stain sets are there now. Are there eight now? I think there might be eight. Yeah, there's four Halloween and four Christmas. Yeah, see, these are all mine. I keep them all in here. They're all gorgeous. I love them. But we're just using the two newest ones for right now. So there's that. What was that one called? That one's Winter Frost. This one is Tart Cranberry. Oh, Glenn, you are one of the reasons you keep me sane. Yes, one of them. <laughs> Or, or makes you a little insane at times? Or makes, or, yeah, I come to my craft room when he's driving me insane. <laughs> okay, so there's those two colors. Much darker. Still gorgeous. Um, what is this? Fresh balsam. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Oh, Matt's here. Yes, Matt's here as well. Okay, so there you go. Yes, I have to say our husbands are our greatest supporters. They, they are our support group. There we go. Oh, that's gorgeous too. Oh, stunning. Again, adding a bit of water. Just going to come in. Just sop some of that up. And again, I've got two new backgrounds. Lovely. Oh my gosh. I don't love this color, but you know what? For die cuts or something, it's going to be amazing. I'm just going to dip that in so you can see those mica veins going on there once I dip it back in. Ah, stunning. I can hardly stand it. It's so gorgeous. 
I'm going to grab out one of my big tags because I just can't waste the ink. Just can't waste the ink. There you go. That'll be that'll be used for something. Okay, so cleaning up my mess again. There we go. I'm gonna set these aside. I'm running out of room. This is what happens when I create. I turn around and on the floor, there's just wet things waiting to dry. Okay, now one more thing before I move on and finish my tag. Um, and I told Cherry, this this stencil um, is actually from a company. I don't think you carry them. It's all in Create um, out of Europe. But I did it through a crackle paste. And now you can't really see it. Oh, there we go. Got it. So I did a crackle paste. Now this was the, the Distress Translucent Crackle Paste. Had to get that right. So if you've got a crackle paste, again, get your stuff out and use it, people. Just going to spray some of that on. Going to add a bit of water. There we go. I just love how it sits in the cracks. It's just so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Again, this is still wet. It's going to look different when it's dry, but yeah, that is a crackle paste. So yeah, that's another thing I do is I will get out my stencils, my much loved stencils, and I'll get out like texture paste, crackle paste, whatever, um, light and fluffy paste. And I will. Um, just put them through and, and have uh, tags around that has the texture paste on them. And then I'll come and I'll be like, I'm going to ink over that. or I'm going to spray over that. And then I will just end up with whole new backgrounds. So yeah, I love the, the, the crackle paste are gorgeous. All right. Just wanted to quickly show you that. Okay. So let's come back to this one. Remember this one? This is the one where I did the champagne uh, sparkle, stardust butter, sorry, stardust butter on the background. I used the platinum stardust butter through a stencil, heated it up, remember, and it puffed up and we all got very excited. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. And then it cooled down. And then I took my finger and I gently pressed those bubbles down because I just wanted a bit of texture, which I absolutely love. I wish you could feel it. It's gorgeous. So here we are. There's my finish tag. Now, before I move on and add my die cuts, I do like to add a little bit, a little bit of um, splatter. I just, I just like splatter. I just do. I always tell my people because um, it's like people kind of freak out when I start splattering inks. It's like, it's okay. Like just because I'm doing it doesn't mean you need to do it. The water doesn't affect the paste. Are you talking about, where did I put it? This one, the crackle paste. The crackle paste I did yesterday, so it was actually dry. I don't know if that's what you mean. This paste was dry on that one. Okay, so I am going to add a bit of splatter to this. I'm going to stick with my, with my micas because they're here. So I'm going to open this up. And I'm just going to start tapping. I'm going to get some big blotches, some smaller blotches. There we go. Love it. Love the splatter. Love how it just kind of breaks everything up. There you go. So there's that splatter on there. Um, it is, it, here, let me put you on the screen. So Joanne's asked a very good question. Will all the stencil butters bubble when heated? Yes, they will. Here, this one is still wet. So this was the stencil butter. I'm going to add my heat to it. Thank you. 
So I just did it in this area here, just so you could see the difference. So this not heated and this part there heated. So you can see what it does. It just kind of puffs up and you can leave it like that. Like I said, you don't have to push it down. Um, you can leave it like that. I do wait a little bit because it can get a little bit hot. Okay, but it's not now. And I just go in and just push it down and I'll show you the difference again. Okay, so heated, puffed up, and I pushed it down. So you can see the difference between what this looks like and what that looks like. So this is very smooth, looks fabulous, love it. But sometimes I just want to lend a little bit more interest to it. So I just heat it up, make it bubble, and then I push it down again. So you can see the difference there. Now, like I said earlier, not all paste, not all butters are made the same. Some are not meant to be heated to the point where they bubble up. Some of them will burn. Some of them will smoke. So if you want to try some of yours, I just suggest that you use an event, well ventilated area and just be very close. Just be very careful. Yeah. Yeah. It does totally change the look. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And I just do it just because I want something just a little bit different, just a little different. Okay. So there, my tag is now ready to be finished. And here is my finished tag there. Now, through the magic of the internet, and because I was organized, I actually die cut all my pieces earlier. And I already created all my flowers. So I went through and I used, let me get it out again, this die set, which Sherry and I both have available for purchase. This is an exclusive die set that was in the Spellbinders class just this previous Saturday. And if you took that class, you would already have this die set, but we both have just the die set for purchase. So if you're interested in this, um, you can contact um, your closest store. Um, now, Spellbinders has a lot of these floral dies. I love all of them. They're all very different. They're all very, you can use them, mix and match back and forth. The reason why I love this one is because it gives you flowers. It gives you, um, it gives you some winter greenery. It gives you some snowflakes and it gives you the words winter wishes. So for me, this one is like, I can use this a lot for a lot of different seasons, a lot of different reasons, a lot of different celebrations. This to me is just a really great dice set. And there are 22 dies in here. So what I did earlier, I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, as I did take these, my micas, my mica mixes that I made tags, and I took my die set and I cut out as many things as I could out of each tag. And I just, I've got all my pieces in my muffin tin because I like to keep things separated. And then I went through and I, I started building my flowers. And if you're wondering, well, how do you, what, how do I know what goes with which? The, the picture on the front of the die set works really well. Now, one thing I didn't share with you, um, the centers of these flowers, a little bit hard to see, but the centers here, what that was is I did another tag with the gold stencil butter and I die cut out the centers from that. So everything that I used tonight was used to create these cards. Look at my fingers. Sherry, look at my fingers. Um, so micas for the flowers, stencil butters for the center. Yeah, I use no cardstock other than my tag that I worked on. But everything else I created using um, the butters or the spray stains. So I created my flower. Now this one I've got the the red flower. I'm actually going to use the blue one on this one. I'm just going to kind of start putting things together here just so I sort of know what I'm doing. I'm just going to kind of just start placing things. Here's those gorgeous snowflakes that comes with this set. Oh, they're just so stunning. Now, I know a lot of you will want to go ahead and poke out those little bits. I don't necessarily do that. Uh, I don't want to say that I'm lazy, but I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> I kind of just leave them. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter. But if it bothers you, you can go ahead and punch them out. It just gives a different look because no two snowflakes are alike. Exactly. And sometimes you get really lucky and all the little bits come out. And then that's when I go, yeah, score. 
And then the ones that don't, I'm like, meh, whatever. Um, so I'm going to put a few snowflakes on there. Let's do three. Um, I need to get some of that winter greenery in here. So I'm just going to start creating my little, my little gathering of winter florals. Sorry, my head keeps hitting my camera. I hope it's not shaking too much. There you go. And I'm just going to take my glue and just start gluing things down and then I will have a finished tag. This will this will be good to go on um, a present this year. It'll be really good because this will be like first real Christmas in a very long time getting together with family and friends. Now I stuck these two big ones down just by the stems underneath where that flower is. Put my flower down there. Just put glue in the middle because I'm going to want to tuck other things in there. And so all, all of my florals are all colored in the mica stains. Kind of hard to see, but you can see this one, the different colors of greens, and you definitely get those mica veins in there, which I absolutely love. Stick that in. Oh, there's so much greenery with this. It's just so amazing what you get in this set. I love it. And I know Sherry's like me. It's like we both have this set, but just not enough time to play with it. This is actually the first time I've had to play with this set. Well, the thing is, if people, um, if you cut out too many pieces, save save the pieces you don't use. Because oh, exactly. you never know when you're going to need it for the next project. Exactly. Especially these snowflakes. I am loving these snowflakes. I think I might just go. I've still got um, the new, the micas that I made, mica tags that I made tonight. I think I'm just going to go in and just keep cutting, just keep cutting some of those die cuts and put them in my muffin tin and then they're ready for me. Different florals. Here's this one. Love that. I didn't put the center in that one, but that's all right because it's just going to be tucked in. Just to make a little bit. Do I have any red ones? Yes, I do have a couple of red ones. Let's stick those in there. This is kind of my favorite part. It's just this, you know, gluing these things down just to make this little gathering of gorgeousness here on my tag. It's very zen. And look how pretty that is. Oh, awesome. I love it. So on this one, I did do the winter wishes. So you can see that there. Now I will point out, and I didn't notice this when I, when I first brought the die, there's only one W. So you have the one die that says winter and the other one just says issues. When I cut it out, I'm like, wait, where's the W? But no, the W is only in there one time. Winter. And then you have to cut out the extra W. But that's okay. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the back of that. And then I will have two tags ready for this holiday season. Winter wishes. Here we go. And I know Sherry. Sherry's actually the one who gave me this idea of the, of the muffin tins. Right? Look how perfect that is. I usually use the, the cupcake liners as well if I've got lots of pieces because that oh, way I can just take out the liner, dump out that little cup. Oh, you're so smart. With well, <laughs> It was a happy accident because I was using actually one of my real baking muffin tins. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, I better not put, you know, get glue and stuff in there. Yeah. So, uh, I put the cupcake liners in and then it was so much easier to just pull out that little cup yeah instead of dumping the whole tray i see i didn't use what i had i actually went to i think value village and i bought these yeah so, i have since I mean, purchased one specifically yeah. for paper crafting but on yeah that day, that is, i have a drawer here in my in my room so that's where they all go i can shut the drawer and then i when i make muffins which is rarely i don't have to worry about trying to find my muffin tin Okay, well, let me just uh, put the lid on my glue here. I hope everyone enjoyed that. That was so much fun. 
And I'm I'm happy I was a non-winner because this was fun. I, I really enjoyed um, joining you guys. But there are my two tags. And what I'm going to do, oops, there we go. Try and get in the center there. Uh, what I will do is I'm going to take photos of these, some close-up photos when I get to the store tomorrow, when I get under my good lights and can take good photos. And I will post them in the comments of this video and I'll send them to Sherry and then Sherry can post them too. That way you can get a nice close-up look at them. Awesome. And I will also make a list. I'm just going to... You want to see my tag? I do just um, okay. Sorry, I'll let you finish what you're doing. Get back here now. Let's take a look at what Sherry did. Um, there, there we go. go. Oh, it's gorgeous. So I added some gems, and I didn't have my tag is still drying. So yes. <laughs> I'm messy. Yay. <laughs> I, I can't let my mat be messy though. So I was constantly cleaning it up. But um, this is one of the play tags I was making. So it has the red and then I used a yellow. And I mm. think I put a blue on there, but it didn't show up super well. And this is another one that's still drying over here. Oh. Aren't the mic is gorgeous? I just love them. They yeah. really are. So once these are a little bit more dry, like I may, I may use this one to do my sentiment because I like that that yellow fleck to it. Um, or Great idea. Mm -hmm. when you did your blue, I of course had to do green because <gasps> that's my store color. Oh. So I did that green with the uh, the champagne over top of it. So. I need yeah. to do something with this as well. Gorgeous. Oh, you're welcome, Wendy. I like messing with you. Yeah. Yes. I really <laughs> enjoyed. I just did, I enjoyed messing with Sandy tonight or Sherry tonight. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we were messy. We got messy. Well, okay. I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to Sherry for issuing the challenge because that was that was fun. We had so much fun with our customers and with Sherry. We kept texting back and forth. Kept sending each other photos. It was like, oh, I'm so glad I was the non-winner because I had so much fun Good. creating these tags. So what I like I said, I'll take photos. I will put them yeah. in the comments. I will send them to Sherry and Sherry can put them in the comments in her group as yeah. well. That and then good. Sherry and I are going to work out a date for her to do a demo and we will get that posted and we will have that Sherry do something for us as well. So thank you so much. I have loved seeing all your comments. This is great. Thank you so much. And yes, you will be able to find this and rewatch it on the Paper Crafters Workshop site, on our inspiration group. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank Sherry. you, guys. And thank you, Julia. This was so much fun. And, uh, you know, we don't get enough time to craft as it is. And it's so much fun to craft with a friend. So It is. It's so much fun. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Good and night, look, everyone. messy hands. Have a great night, everyone. Bye. Take care, everyone. Have a good night.